It's a few moments after the close of our last episode. Almost time for the trial of State versus May Grant for the murder of Marcel Blanc to resume. As at the defense table, we hear... May. May. What? Oh, Mr. Mason. You can tear your handkerchief to pieces. Don't worry. But I am. As your lawyer, I'm worried plenty. I'm not a lawyer, Mr. Mason. And those people on the jury aren't lawyers either. Everybody in this room knows how Dory's testimony makes me look. Like a thief. Like an unfaithful wife. Like a murderess. May, put down that handkerchief. Dory didn't want to say those things, but the way Mr. App made it sound, everyone... No, not everyone. I don't. Don't try to cheer me up, Mr. Mason. Thanks. Listen to me. I said I thought App made a mistake putting Dory on the stand. I still do. And more than that, everybody is going to see that mistake when they find out what Dory's testimony really meant. What? We hope Perry can show what Dory's words really meant. Well, here she comes now. Use that handkerchief to wave to her, May. And uh, keep your eyes open. Court is now in session. Thank you, Your Honor. Hello, Mr. Mason. Hi, Dory. You ready to talk? Well, just let me fix mine, won't you? Oh, me? yes, by all means. You must have your doll comfortable. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, he's all right. Mm. Ah, well, good. Now, Dory, I'm going to speak to the uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury for a minute. You play with your doll while I do that, hmm? Grown-up talk? Mm, just for a second. All right, Mr. Mason. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the prosecutor read into the record May Grant's statement of the night of the murder. Mrs. Grant said that Marcel Blanc was planning her own murder. That he gave her permission to tell Dory goodbye, and then she was to be taken out and killed. The state claims that Mr. Blanc was merely sending Mrs. Grant back to her husband, that she was in no danger, and that Blanc was spurning her love. Now, Mr. Amp used this little girl's testimony to support his claims. I would now like to take a close look at her testimony. Dory. Yes, Mr. Mason. Here, take a look at this book. Now, see if you can tell us what it is. Here, you hold it. Oh, it's my Bible. The Bible Mommy gave me. Yeah, what is this, Mason? You heard the young lady after. It's a small pocket Bible. Mommy gave it to me. Are you sure it's the same one, Dory? Oh, yes. Uh, Apt, would you like to examine it before I offer it in evidence? In case you were in any doubt, there's an inscription in front. I don't see what this has to You're do. You're about to. Uh, Dory. Yes, Mr. Mason. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something that isn't easy. I'm going to ask you to remember something just as hard as you can. All right, Mr. Mason. I want you to remember when you were given this book. And I want you to remember all you can that was said at that time. Now, just a minute, Mr. Mason. This is a six-year-old child. Mm -hmm. A six-year-old child who remembers very well. Uh, to quote you. Eh? Those are your words, Mr. Rapp. Would you like the court reporter to read them back to you? No, thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, Dory, tell us about it. Hmm? And even if you didn't understand all the words, you tell us all of them that you can. Hmm? Well, Mommy gave me my little Bible. Mrs. Grant? Uh-huh. The last night in the apartment. It was after he said she was going home to Daddy. And then Mr. Blanc left the room? Uh-huh. Now think, Dory. You told us a little while ago that your Mommy said that she was going home, too. Now, we want to know all about that. Everything she said that you remember. Go ahead, Dory. Everything you can. All right. Mommy sat down by my bed and she took my hand. I didn't want her to go and leave me, but she had to go. I remember she said, It's almost time for me to leave, Dory. I'd like to see you fast asleep when I walk out that door. Mommy. Oh, darling. Please don't cry. Please. Mommy, I, I want to go with you. I know, baby. But you can't go with me. He said you were going to Daddy. What? Oh. Aren't you, Mommy? Aren't you? Or was he just fooling? Mommy, was he... Dory. He said you'd come back and get me. Was he fooling, Mommy? Dory, I've never lied to you. I've never told you a story. Something untrue. No, Mommy. So now I'm going to tell you something bad and something good. What? Mr. Blank was fooling a little about me. I won't be coming back soon. Don't cry. Listen and understand. And believe me, darling. 
because it may be a long time before... Before you come back for me. Before anyone tells you the truth again. Mr. Frank, where's Foley? Are you going back today? And when he said he'd take care of me... Sorry, darling. He wasn't fooling about that. I'm sure you take very good care of you. I have to believe that. Daddy. Mr. Blunt said... I believe that, too, darling. Go see, Daddy. Someday. Sometime. You'll come back for me. Sometime, darling. We'll be together again sometime. Somewhere. You sure? Very, very sure. Did Mr. Blunt tell you you could... No. Someone else. Someone else who always tells the truth. Who? Someone that you must learn to count on. God. Oh. Where are you going? To get a book. I've had it a long time. I'm leaving it for you, Dory. When you grow up and when you learn to read, I want you to read this book. Read it through and think about it. I don't expect you to understand now, darling. But promise me to try and remember. Try and remember to keep this Bible. Promise me, darling. I promise. I'm going to read us something from it. Something that's true. It's all I can give you, my baby. Are you ready to listen? Yes. All right, then. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I rod, my stand. You will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Daddy taught me all of it when I got home. It's the 23rd Psalm. I don't know what all the words mean, but it's pretty. It's awful pretty. And I always think of Mommy when... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The valley of the shadow of death. And the child asked, Will you see Daddy? Will you see me again? And May Grant answered, Someday, darling. Someday, sometime, somewhere. You all know the place and time she meant, ladies and gentlemen. The place and the time on the other side of the valley. The valley of death. May Grant thought she was going to be killed. But she had courage enough to find a way around telling a lie to the little girl she loved more than life itself. Now, Dory, one thing more, honey, and that's about all. Now, some people haven't believed that you and Mrs. Grant were actually held prisoners, have they? What? Oh, I should be ashamed of myself. You're tired, aren't you, darling? I, I would like a glass of water. Yes, of course you would. And a chance to get off that chair and move around before I ask any more questions. Your Honor, uh, could we have a short delay while Dory gets a drink of water? Oh, Your Honor, I... You what, Mr. Rapt? Object to this child getting a drink of water? Object to her moving around a bit? I... No, no, get your glass of water, child, get your glass of water. Not that it will help you any. No, Your Honor, I have no objections to a short delay. Things aren't going at all well for Mr. Apt. In fact, it looks as if his gamble in putting that child on the stand is going to turn into a losing gamble. 
That's what Kitty DiCarlo warned him might happen when Apt first mentioned using Dory. We're going to learn more about that tomorrow, so by all means, join us.